Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I just wanted to make a quick little video about what it was like for me to, I guess, get into the IT field and move into uh, war zone contracting, which is kind of what I do for a living. Um, this video is specifically about that. So if you're here for some other type of content, just check out the next video. Don't even worry about watching this one because it'll probably be pretty boring to you. Um, okay. What is going on everybody? Today is another exciting day. Um, I'm going to take a quick moment to talk about a couple of things. Uh, first of all, we'll talk about, uh, I guess, the little mini absence I was vlogging every day. So by the way, I still film, still vlog every day, but I didn't post a video. The reason why, I mean, it was 9-11, so to be honest, like for me, I didn't want to really do very much that day and uh, just kind of chilled out, just relaxed and, uh, you know, reflected a little bit kind of weird to do, but you know, I am an American who spent a lot of time in Afghanistan and I kind of remember looking at the date and I was like, you know what, I don't think I'm going to post today. I think I'm just going to kind of keep it mellow. So yeah, that's what I did. Another thing too, I was going to talk a little bit about the process to becoming a contractor. If you're new here, uh, first of all, welcome. For the people that recently subscribed, thank you and, uh, and also welcome. A little bit about me, I uh, contracted in Afghanistan for a little over four years in total time and on this last stint, three years pretty much consecutive, uh, traveling around the world in between working. But I wanted to tell you guys a quick little uh, story on how I got to Afghanistan, how I got into government contracting. Um, just so for the other people that are out there that are interested in doing something like that, they can also uh, start following that path. Back in the day, um, when I started specifically in the IT field, I didn't really have a lot of experience. Um, my friend, a good friend of mine, he was really into computers and really into IT and technology and stuff and I was also a huge fan of it but knew nothing about it and he kind of took me under his wing, taught me some ropes, taught me some basics and that allowed me to start kind of pushing for entry level positions in the field. And basically what I did is I ended up taking a job at a call center making um, like $11 an hour, maybe $12 an hour. And you know, not too, too long ago, I think this is around 2008 or 2009, um, but I was hustling. I'm always hustling. I'm always doing something different. I'm always working really hard towards something. Um, and I think that that's always really important is to just kind of be working towards something at all times. But working there, I worked there for six months, quit, ended up getting another job working at a commissary, which is like a, a little grocery store for the military. And I was doing like their IT computer repair. I did that for about another three, four, five, six months tops. And I think that that whole project kind of started falling apart. And at the same time, I was offered to go work in the private sector. All this time I'm building up my resume. And as you do that, uh, you'll start opening more doors, the more experience you have. And of course, in the DOD world, certifications are really important. They really care about how many cert certifications you have. There's DOD requirements that actually enforce the fact that you have to have these certifications. And I would say around year two is whenever I got my first Department of Defense job. Again, call center job, entry level, uh, no clearance required, and I ended up getting my foot in the door that way. But that is what spiraled me into Afghanistan. Well, I ended up having a coworker, multiple coworkers. The thing about having a high turnover area is you're gonna meet a lot of people, and a lot of people moving on to bigger and better things, which means that if you network and connect or talk and just meet friends, be a cool person in general, you're gonna find them and they can help you, you know, advance your career later on. Uh, because as you'll notice in the IT field, it is kind of a tightly close-knit community, but the best of the best will it always excel the fastest. And the more time you invest into learning technology and IT stuff, the sooner and faster you're gonna get from an entry-level position to a, uh, a tier two, tier three position or network engineer, system engineer, whatever. So first DOD job, um, I have a friend, she goes to Afghanistan, she's like, hey, you know, blah, blah, there's opportunities out here. Another friend went, started hearing more and more about contracting in Afghanistan. Um, and there was a little bit of stigma around the idea of working in a war zone. I got promoted again and kind of to another role, but uh, things weren't really working out there and uh, I ended up getting another opportunity to go at the same time work in Afghanistan and that was going to give me a secret clearance which would, at the end of the day, further my career only that much further. So I took the job, went to Afghanistan and sure enough, after I spent uh, a year and a couple months there, um, I ended up coming back to the United States 
and immediately started getting job offers. Uh, I didn't even apply. I haven't applied for a job, and I, I hope this doesn't come off as like narcissistic or what have you, but um, I haven't applied for a job in a very, very long time. I mean, the only reason why I'm applying for the job is because I'm being told by a recruiter or someone to, to apply for the job. But once you start gaining five, six, seven, eight years of experience in any IT field, what's going to happen is people are going to reach out to you, specifically on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a great place to meet people. And actually, for the UAE, the Middle East, BAIT, I'll put that in the description below, B-A-Y-T.com. I never considered them, never thought that they were uh, something that was worth uh, investing time in because there's so many people looking for jobs in UAE, it's very easy to get buried under all the resumes that are out there. So uh, they actually ended up um, working out for me in a small way. We'll talk about that more in the future, but whenever I first started looking for jobs in UAE a very long time ago, there was really a limited opportunity and it was definitely a who you know thing, not more like you know, what's your skill set, uh, which again is still a big thing in the rest of the world. It's not just UAE, but uh, you know, like I mentioned before, the reason why I got into Afghanistan is because I knew somebody that was with that company. They, you know, referred me and that ended up getting me an interview and then that worked out. But after that, minimal, minimal application. So going back to the States, after I spent a year and a couple months in Afghanistan for the first time, I uh, started working for uh, Rackspace, which is uh, now owned by another company, but um, at the time, uh, they were you know, like a billion dollar uh, hosting company to host web services, managed services, et cetera. Uh, that company was probably the company that I learned the most from. They, they took me under their wing. They, they basically spent like, I think three months, three months just training me and then another three months working. And I was on night shift and I, I started to realize how, um, limited my social life was and uh, because my social life started getting impacted so much I decided to go ahead and move on into uh, another DOD job and again they kind of reached out to me and I just kind of threw out a crazy salary requirement and they paid it so I took the job. So I took that job uh, working for uh, the Air Force at the time and uh, it, again they, they actually required that secret clearance which gave me an elevated uh, you know bracket of pay, I, I guess you could say. And so I ended up getting paid a little bit more to work for those guys. And then after working with those guys for about two years, and I don't know what it was, it was the itch, it was something, but uh, something pulled me back into Afghanistan. I was really kind of uh, interested to go back. I didn't finish the amount of work or accomplish as many of my goals as I wanted to, both financially, uh, technically, etc. cetera. Uh, so what ended up happening is a, another job opportunity came up. Working in Afghanistan, the pay was uh, quite a bit more um, and the big bonus was that I was going to get upgraded to a top secret clearance and I really wanted that so um, I ended up taking that opportunity went to Afghanistan and, uh, and worked there for about uh, two years which kind of uh, is still continuous I still have employment there but I'm again taking care of myself in the UAE okay so hopefully that long-winded conversation wasn't too bad but uh, what I was trying to explain to you is that yes there's a lot of work that goes into it before you get from point A to point B, but if you're interested in contracting spe specifically for the government, what you can do is you can A, join the military, get a secret clearance, start getting your certifications paid for by the U.S. military, go to school while you're in the U.S. military. A lot of people complain and say it's impossible, you can't do it, but you can, you can. Anything you put your mind to, you work hard enough, you can do it. By the way, I'm from a military city and all the people that were working there, uh, also were going to school, or a lot of the people that were in my class were either in the military or had another job. So you put in the effort, you bust your ass, you work really hard, and you can get a degree if that's what you want. Um, but anyone who tells me, I, oh, I worked, you know, I worked, you know, 40 hours a week, you know, blah 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 blah. I don't have time to get certifications. I don't, I don't listen to that at all. I think that's an excuse. Um, I don't care if you have kids and family. There's things that you can do. Um, for most people in most situations to accommodate whatever goal you have in life. You just have to figure it out. You have to invest the time and figure it out. So anyways, I was working 40 hours a week plus, you know, I think I was running a side business and also going to the gym, you know, trying to maintain like all these things and also relationships, you know, involved with that as well. It, it, it doesn't make things easy. Definitely isn't easy, but you invest the time, you work hard, and then, you know, eventually one day, you know, in my opinion, uh, you, you get the reward, which is, you know, a higher pay scale, uh, more, more job opportunities, 
and the ability to travel around the world, which is what I like to do if you want to do that. Um, but yeah, so if you're military, that helps. If you are uh, a cert certification holder and been in the IT field for a certain amount of time, that definitely is going to help. Um, but definitely job experience is like the, be the, the biggest thing for Afghanistan in general. Uh, yeah, and, and there's jobs and contractors all over the world in both uh, the Defense Department, uh, private companies who are contracting for the Defense Department, um, or if you just, I mean, and we're talking multiple different war zones, we're talking Libya, we're talking, uh, you know, Afghanistan, obviously Iraq, well, it seems that we're pulling out of Afghanistan, but there is a lot of opportunity out there. Man, this is getting really long I did. Oh, and the biggest benefit for me working overseas, contracting in war zones, is the overseas tax benefit. I mean, if you're making $100,000 or more, which I was at the time in the United States before I took my Afghanistan job, if you're making that kind of money, at the end of the day, you're taking around sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000, and then that is going to be eaten away from whether you have a mortgage or your rent or your cell phone, car, car insurance, all these things that you have end up taking away from all that money that you're making, and it's really hard to put a lot of money in the bank. I mean, of course, you know, you can live within your means and, and, and save $40,000, $50,000 maybe, but, you know, I, I for me personally, I like to do a lot of things, I go out with friends, have food, have drinks, have whatever. And, and the problem is, is when you do all those things, you drastically limit money you can put away in the bank. Uh, so yeah, one of the biggest benefits is that you are going to be saving a lot of money because you get $110,000 tax free. Um, and also working in uh, Afghanistan or, or these war zones, you typically you're gonna have housing accommodation provided for by the company, and then food, you know, all your bills are pretty much taken care of, which gives you a great opportunity to save money. And if you wanna save money and then travel, you can do that because you're right in the middle of all these locations, especially like Europe, Asia, all those, all those locations. You come to UAE, Dubai for your hub, and then you fly out to wherever you wanna go. So it's really convenient, very, very awesome experience to have in the All right, guys. Well, that about wraps up this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something useful from it. If you did, click the like button. Consider subscribing if you're not already. And uh, and yeah, we'll see you in the next one. And by the way, I, I know I'm wearing a sling now. Uh, and the other shots I'm not. It's because I did get the shoulder surgery. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. But uh, yeah, uh, if you want to see that video, it'll be coming up next. I'm going to make a little uh, video on, on how I did it. It's a little graphic, but it's cool. It's cool stuff. And uh, hopefully now, whenever I get back in the gym, everything's going to be much easier to lift and I will be uh, much happier with less pain, which is important. All right, see you the next one, guys.